I'm Alistair Ray and I am the Programme Director for the MSc in Applied GIS at the University of Sheffield. GIS is a field of study and it's also a technology, so geographic information systems refers to the technology, geographic information science refers to the wider field of study and it deals with data and location and they're the two fundamental concepts. So by understanding data and location we can answer lots of the world's most challenging problems. Okay, so we have teaching staff on the programme from the Departments of Geography and Urban Studies and Planning. And students that come here, they'll study a wide range of different topics. So in the first semester, we look at data analysis, introduction to GIS, visualisation, open source GIS. We'll use the world leading GIS software from ESRI. And the focus very much at this stage is on what are the applications of GIS in the real world. So we focus on the technology, but our programme is much more about what we can do with it and how it can help us solve big problems. Well, when we were setting up the programme, one of the things we thought would be really good to do was make sure students coming out of the programme had real world experience. So in the second semester, students take the professional GIS project module. And what that does is it enables them to work on a real world project for an external organisation where they're set a project and they have to deliver to a brief for a client. So for example, last year we had students working on a project for Sheffield City Council and we also had students working on a project for a planning consultancy in Greater Manchester looking at viability of selecting sites for development in the Greenbelt. So each year we choose organisations and we try and make sure one of them's in Sheffield or one of them somewhere else they set projects that they couldn't do otherwise, so our students get the benefit of doing real-world experience on something that may actually come to fruition in the real world. And we think this provides something kind of in addition to their studies within the university. We want them to come out having practical experience, and with a professional GIS project, they've already got that when they graduate. Well, there's a, there's a wide range of employment opportunities from GIS. Of course, people might go into a GIS technician, GIS analyst role, a local authority, a private consultancy, housing associations, but actually there's a really growing demand for people in the field of data science and the kind of skills you have after the masters will equip you perfectly for that. So for example, some of my contacts at organisations like the Financial Times, Ordnance Survey, Rightmove, Bank of England, all these organisations work with data sets that are spatial, need to be mapped and understood spatially. Um, so there's kind of a limitless field of opportunity in the world of data science at the moment and it calls upon people with the kind of skills that we teach. Thankfully we have excellent facilities, we have our own purpose-built GIS lab in the Geography and Planning building which is available to our students only and Students can work in this lab any time of day or night. More importantly, the software, everything is up to date. We have open source GIS, which uh, we use QGIS, and we use ArcGIS. So we use the world's leading proprietary GIS software in ArcGIS, and the world's leading open source software, QGIS. So we're kind of focused on making sure students are coming out of the course right at the forefront of the technology and understanding what they need to use to succeed. Over the last few years I've done quite a lot of work with a wide range of companies. So with Google I've been working with Simon Rogers who's one of the world's leading data journalists and with him I've been exploring what search data can tell us about future trends and we've been looking at that from a geographic perspective. So one example is we recently looked at geographic search patterns associated with the 2015 Canadian elections and trying to understand what the results would be and actually our analysis showed that there was quite a high correlation between search and the eventual winner uh, kind of was predicted from the search data. I've also been working with search data for the UK's leading housing market portal Rightmove and trying to understand the links between where people search, how they search and future housing market sales and that's been really interesting because that's 
I've been the only person who's been able to do that. And as a consequence of that work, I then did another piece of work for the Bank of England, which was trying to understand this from a macroeconomic perspective. So it's very much about the data and the spatial analysis, but actually, when you take a step back, it's about the bigger questions. What can this help us do and know about the world? Um, I've also done some other work with people at the Financial Times, trying to help their interactive team and journalists understand the role that spatial data analysis and GIS, and particularly open source GIS, can play in helping them understand stories and do kinds of analysis that people want to hear about. Another area of research which I've focused on has been travel to work, so commuting data, looking at commuting data and understanding whether commuting patterns, for example, in San Francisco or London, are they sustainable? And this is very much related to house prices, where you get massive house price growth, you get people priced out of cities, they end up having to live further away, they end up having to commute further, and this has all kinds of implications for sustainability, uh, stress, even linking into environmental issues like climate change. So it's trying to understand the links between different issues using GIS and data analysis, and that's kind of what we're focused on. How can we apply this to real-world problems?